part kind of along the Hudson River. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Ah. Yeah. So a lot, lot, a lot of the the towns and uh, villages were incorporated, you know, in the in the 1700s. A lot of 1700s activity. In fact, most oh, of the sites, yeah. most of the sites I go to are, are 1700s. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's in the good area of New York. Yeah. Well, actually, there's a lot of good area of New York, so I can't. Uh, but actually, it's <laughs> right. funny because that's where my mom's side of the family all is. So. Is it? Yes. Oh, nice. Yeah, got to get back up there eventually. Um, so, all right, you started with the Ace 250. What are you swinging now? So now I have the Deus 2 um, and somewhat more recently acquired the, the Manticore. I kind of use, I use both. I use the Deus 2 more, mm-hmm. um, but I'm, I'm now finding kind of the right, you know, situations to pull the manticore in. And I think they actually complement each other really well. It's awesome. Yeah. I I've heard that both, you know, it depends on the scenario and swap, you know, <clears throat> what the ground conditions are like and where you're hunting heavy iron versus not. Yeah. I would say one other thing about the day is too, at least in my experience, is just EMI affects it uh, a lot more than, than the Manticore, presumably because it's wireless. Um, so, you know, in those situations, like I went out on Saturday, and we had a rare, you know, it was over 40 in late January here. And uh, <laughs> so I took advantage of that. And it was a weekend, which was even better. Um, and, you know, I was, of course, the site was right next to a power line. And I, I just couldn't, really couldn't get the DS2 to settle down. So it was a manticore day. Wow. Yeah. Interesting. What what um, frequency do you happen to know what your DS runs off of? Um, so I, I use a couple different programs. And uh-huh. the one that I actually like the best, just chops off the top frequency. Um, okay. So I forget what the frequency max is. It's like twenty something, I think. Uh, okay. okay. So, but even with that, even with even with tailoring off some of the frequencies, it still still can be a little. And I've seen this at other sites too. But uh, okay. But yeah. Cool. All right. So. Um, do you have a favorite find you found with your dais and then vice versa with the manicore? Yeah. Well, so, you know, everyone always asks us, right? This is, this is like the quintessential <laughs> question right. when, when somebody finds out metal detect. And, you know, I, I always used to give different answers um, to different, different people. Cause I, I have so many different favorites, but as of about a month and a half ago, I have one kind of bona fide, top favorite find um and and i'll just tell the story super quick so i was i was in a field this was i don't know was, i would say an ordinary 1700s field right so there was there was a lot of a lot of coppers from the late 1700s buttons i think i i pulled like eight or nine coppers out of this field pretty big field this this year um and was doing some exploring, found a, found a kind of a new area, uh, got a shoe buckle, some, some buttons. I think I got a matron that day and was heading back to the car, like fully satisfied, you know, the feeling. And on the way back, this is always how it goes, isn't it? Uh-huh. On the walk back to the, to the car, I'm swinging. And I actually, I went over, it was over an area where a buddy of mine uh, had gone over a couple of weeks prior. And I thought to myself, man, this, this is a kind of a high signal. You know, it wasn't perfect. So, you know, right. pro- you know, maybe not round or, or, you know, uh, maybe corroded or something like that. Uh, I said, you know what, I got, I got to dig it. It's a high tone in this field. You know, I don't, I wouldn't want to pass over it. So I start digging. It's, yeah, I, I had my, my shovel or spade at the time, maybe it was like, I think, um, 
seven inches, uh, maybe a little bit longer. And it was still in the hole. So I got down and started feeling around, pinpointer, all that good stuff, and felt something sticking out of the sidewall. And, you know, like often you do that and it's like a nail, right? A lot of these areas have just mm-hmm. tons of nails everywhere. Right. You pull them out of the sidewalls. That's not even the, the, you know, the thing that you were, that you were looking for that, that set the detector off. Uh, but I, I pulled it out and I literally remember the thought in my head, damn, it's a nail. Like it got me. Uh, but I kept pulling it out of the sidewall and eventually I had a, a, a four, four and a half, I think, or so inch copper spear point in my oh. hand in the hole. Oh. <laughs> and in my head, right? Like, why did this set the detector off? You know, there's so many things like you, you almost can't believe your eyes or your senses mm-hmm. as, as to how this thing got to where it is. Uh, and of course I, I started like messaging a bunch of buddies right there. I uh, couldn't believe it. It's, still, it's all in one piece. And of course learned a ton more about this, but uh, ultimately, you know, the New York state museum uh, you know, kind of analyzed it and found that it was from 3,580 to 8,500 years before present. It dates to the archaic period. What? That's awesome. Yeah. Oh so, like, you know how God. often you, you, you put yourself in the shoes of the person who kind of, like, lost whatever you pick up? And like that's part uh-huh. of the fun of it. Uh-huh. This just uh-huh. this just brings that to a whole new level. Absolutely, man. Does. <sighs> I've, I've got a weird thought on that, uh, Brandon. I was just thinking, you know, I've been working with a lot of psychics lately. It would be so cool to have a psychic hold that and see what impressions they got. Oh my gosh. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, no, uh, that that would be so cool. I just the the whole concept of it and learning about you know how people lived at at this time. Uh, yes, I see in the in the chat copper culture. So I, I guess from what I understand and what the New York State Museum had shared, you know, this copper came from the Great Lakes region, and to mm-hmm. find it this far east is is somewhat rare, rather rare, um, and they're kind of connecting the dots between the, around these like long distance trade routes that used to take place back in the archaic period. So really just fascinating. And I could probably read just about this find, uh, you know, for years to come. But so that is my, that is my top favorite find story. Well, definitely, man, that's neat. Uh, Brandon, I got to go up to, um, Michigan up in the, um, what do you call that? Oh, the upper peninsula up there and look for mm-hmm. float copper. And, um, I got to go to some really neat copper museums and the copper, um, mine and stuff while I was there. And as they say, it migrated from there. There's a lot of people. Yeah. That did, you know, detect in that up in that great lake area that find those pieces from those, you know, those really old, oh, that's, that's just amazing that you found that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, just thinking about that journey, like you said, it could have come in from, um, a trade route or, you know, you never know. Um, that's kind of what, well, uh, kind of what I want to talk about on, in my next book. Um, so, I might have to do a little interview with you later uh, about that. Oh, I, so. I would love to. I can send pictures. I have pictures on my Instagram as well of, of that one. Um, okay. But, yeah, we'd be, we'd be happy to help. Because it's definitely um, something that reoccurs a l- very often and is found in some of the oddest states um, that you would never think that there's a lot of relics and artifacts to get in these fields that are much, much older. Um, 
anyway, that's a whole nother story, but that is really, really cool. That's, that's epic, Brandon. Congrats. Yeah. Once in a lifetime, for sure. Definitely. Definitely. Now, where you're detecting, do you do cornfields or anything like that? Yeah, th- this one was a uh, was uh, you know a hay field, but uh, yeah, I do cornfields, hay fields, woods. Um, I kind of you know love them all in different ways. You know, there's different different aspects to each of them that are that are appealing. Certainly, at different times of the year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, when you're out there uh, metal detecting, do you do any like arrowhead hunting, like keeping your eye on the ground for any arrowheads or beads or? I do, and I've I've never I've not never yet. found one. Not um, yet. <laughs> yeah, not yet. That's an area I would love to get into, especially now because it's just pe- it's piqued my interest, you know, uh, mm-hmm. so so kind of intensively. But uh, between that and like and learning really kind of like the art of uh, bottle digging too, um, I, w- I would love to get into both of those things. Well, if you ever make a trip to Maine, I got a few bottle dumps. <laughs> uh, seriously, I may, may take you up on that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Gypsy, you've gone a couple times with me now. Um, yeah, yeah. Got, there, I have, there's some neat, neat old bottles over there. <laughs> a lot older than what we find here in Texas, that's for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. So... Um, let's see what else we got. Um, so that's your favorite find. Do you have like, I know some people do wish lists or bucket lists or a white whale. Do you have one, um, that you'd want to share with us? Yeah, I, uh, I, at this point, anything capped bust, I, I really would love to find, um, you know, I, I, I do, I, of course, I love finding coins. I love finding all sorts of different things. Uh, but this has evaded me for a while. And I, I don't find a ton of silver on the sites that I'm fortunate enough to have permission to. Um, mm-hmm. So just v- very much looking forward to that first cap bust uh, coming out of the ground. Yeah. It's a nice oh, looking man. coin. Yeah. So that that's... That's pretty much your white whale, what you want to find, cat bust. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so right now. You know, it, it changes over time, uh, but right. that, that, would be, that would be pretty thrilling for me. Awesome. So you find a lot of largies, a lot of coppers. Yeah, a, a ton, yeah. Wow. Yeah, and, 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 you know, not to complain about it, of course, uh, but... Um, you know, and and they're great, right? There's so much variety across large sense over the years, and uh, you see so much variation in uh, condition depending on where they're found. I found like really beautiful ones in the woods, and then the field right next to that woods, they'll be completely white. You know, um, it just corroded from from the fertilizers and different things. So. You know, wow. th- that's, a, that's always fun and always thrilling to hear that, hear that tone, you know? Right. So, um, you get to metal detect with some friends occasionally, uh, instead of just getting out a- alone, right? That's what you were saying. You were with someone. Yep. That's yeah, always it's always nice. better. It's always better, you know, in a group. Cause then you can, I don't know. I, I always feel that way because you can celebrate each other's signs. It's almost like. I've got, you know, two machines and I'm, I'm swinging and I can celebrate twice as much. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's great. And one, one of my buddies who I went to college with kind of helped get me into this. You know, after I got that ACE 250 off of Craigslist, um, you know, we reconnected or, or, you know, we were in contact and we were like, wait, you metal detect? Wait, you have a metal detector? And we got together and... <laughs> Yeah, we we go out we go out a lot, but the, you know the and everybody I, I think says this, but the camaraderie and meeting other people with this interest that's one of the one of the coolest things about it. Yeah, is the people you meet for sure, and um, yeah. 
It's it's one of the most amazing things. And um, 